Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Thursday the 31st of March, the last day of the quarter, comes to you from London and we will see quite a few contracts expiring today. Uh, so seeing my screen just at first glance, I've got quite a lot of red on the Asian indices and the commodities. So uh, that just is a heads up. And then I look at my energy mix. Similarly, we see crude oils down quite heavily this morning on the announcement that the US uh, government might release some oil reserves. So that's um, creating more crude into the market, which is affecting the price. Uh, we look at the dollar index, first of all. Uh, it's uh, remembering this is my weekly, daily and 60 minute chart with the corresponding point and figure chart. So this is long term, medium term and short term view of the market. So the dollar has been weaker this week, but still uh, has the upper hand in terms of strength. Against the euro, we're at 111. Uh, we did dip below that 110 level uh, earlier in the week, but we've actually managed to recover some ground. So um, the dollar has just softened a bit. But against the yen, a dollar is holding that 120 level, uh, which is highly significant. The yen normally being the risk on trade, so uh, so the risk off trade, but we're seeing now that um, the dollar has that upper hand, and that's still a sign really of dollar strength and a big upside target that was activated last week. Uh, sterling sitting at 131.26, so no real big changes here, uh, mostly sideways. And against the euro, sterling has weakened quite considerably this week. Well, it's it's a, a combination of sterling weakness and euro strength, uh, so we are just shorter term bearish there. Uh, the S&P 500 index was down uh, two thirds of a percent last night, just can't get quite above the cloud on the lagging line on that medium term chart and the downside targets are still very much in train of course and we do get these counter trend moves we're not necessarily in a full downtrend yet on the long term chart but on the medium term chart we are and these sharp counter trend moves you will see these uh, so no, no big surprises there a lot of volatility in the market this year so far and the nasdaq was down over one percent so that was quite key as well the futures are down this uh, up this morning slightly the s p future up 0.16 percent the uh the nasdaq uh e mini is up half a percent so that's quite uh, interesting there and the vix volatility sitting steady just below the 20 level so the fear index is still not that fearful uh, looking at European markets, um, we have got uh, the FTSE future this morning actually up uh, two thirds of a percent and that has got back above the cloud and the FTSE is not that far from making new highs. It's, a, it's interesting that we're seeing the FTSE doing better than most uh, indices there, less affected by the Ukraine situation. The DAX in Germany, we've highlighted 15,000 is the key level that we need to get above. Uh, we are up slightly this morning, but uh, that's the, going to be the struggle for the DAX. The Cat Courant, little change this morning as well. Asia was a heavier faller, so we did see Japan down 1%, the Hang Seng also down 1%, and the Shanghai index also lower, uh, and even the Aussie index, uh, which is normally higher, uh, fell away as well. So we are just seeing, although it has been really steady, the Aussie index, and that downside target never activated like the other markets. Uh, we'll look at the energy mix in a minute. We're seeing commodities falling away. Coffee down 0.4%. Uh, sugar is actually also lower, uh, so that's quite key as well. Uh, but on the whole, these trends have changed, even though we're seeing pullbacks at the moment. Uh, wheat has been a, a really critical one, uh, but at the moment it's holding that 1,000 level, so that's quite key. Uh, gold is sitting at 1925, just can't really break higher, but uh, that 1900 level is now critical support for gold. Let's see if that holds. Silver also just struggling uh, to make any ground at the moment. Uh, US 10-year yields are sitting at 2.33%, so they've pulled right back. Remember, they we see these big pullbacks and then a run. So we saw that in February, we saw these pullbacks and then a run to higher highs. So uh, 250 is the level now that we need to break. And there is a little bit of a shortage of targets on the charts here, but that will come in. Um, taking a look at Apple, that was one that was critical last night. Uh, we had made 11 consecutive day up days yesterday it fell so 
that run broken and we were unable to deactivate this downside target we need to break really above the 182 183 level to do that so um, Apple still has that target hanging over it looking at the energy mix we've got Brent crude uh, lower this morning as I mentioned the US announcing that release of reserves uh, WTI falling more heavily on that uh, the the triangle pattern is still very much in trade and the uptrend is still bullish on the medium term chart the shorter term chart we are bearish and we've got a mixed picture here the one minute targets if you're trading crude are absolutely vital us nat gas down 1.46 percent we're actually neutral pretty much everything today in energy uh and if we look at the uh Carbon price just really struggling at around this 80 mark, so that's been quite key as well. Uh, we are seeing gas prices just ha having recovered off lows, so that's going to be really critical to watch this break of 125 uh, there. And we have seen this cloud cross for gas prices, so that's really quite key. Uh, and the same uh, with MBP, we're just seeing that rise there as well. German power is sitting up 1% on the verge of making new highs. So these energy trends are still very much in train. Today's moves are just short term counter trend moves where they're negative, but we're already seeing that changing as the day wears on. We were down and now we're up. So it's quite interesting. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you then.